So good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good, good evening. Thank you. So we were discussing yesterday about the steps involved in research. We have to select the in one of these stages. We have to select the sample for the for our study research study. So, what is a sample and what is a population? Population is the universe of the study. It is the set of all the elements having the given characteristic in which we are interested. Suppose we want to study class five children of Odisha. So all the children studying in class five in the various schools of Odisha constitute the population of the study. A population can be finite or infinite. When it is finite, when we can count them. Suppose population of college teachers or population of class five students of Odisha. Okay. When it is infinite, for example, if our population is fishes in a river, stars in the sky, we cannot count them. We cannot study the entire population. It is impossible because it is um, very fast. So in research, we take a smaller representation of the population. That is called a sample. So a sample is a smaller representation of the population. How to select the sample? Broadly, there are two methods of um, selecting the sample. Number one, probability sampling method. Number two, non-probability method. Probability method, in probability method, likelihood of inclusion of each element in the sample is known or it is specified, it is known. Examples of probability samples are random sample, stratified random sample, and cluster sample. In random sample, sample each element has an equal chance of being selected. It has an equal chance of being selected. What is the stratified random, uh, stratified random sample? We divide the population into uh, different strata. First, uh, we divide the sample, uh, we divide the population into different strata. Suppose uh, we decide our cat strata means categories, class. We decide to divide our population uh, as male and female. So male and female are different strata of the population. We may decide uh, to divide the population into different religious groups, Hindus, Muslims, um, Christians, etc. So society is, um, society consists of different strata. And from each strata, we um, select randomly um, specified number of um, elements. So it is a stratified random sample. Um, actually, stratified random sample is a better representation of the population. Then another probability sampling method is cluster sample. Cluster sample means uh, we uh, geographically divide the um, 
we decided uh, <clears throat> um, suppose um, we want to cover uh, wide geographical areas. We want to conduct a large scale study uh, in our country. What will, will we do? We select randomly some states. Then from each state, we select some specified number of districts randomly. And from each district, we uh, suppose we are going to study the class 5 uh, students, um, primary school students. So from each uh, district, we randomly select specified number of primary uh, schools. From each school, uh, um, we go to the class 3, yeah, sorry, class 5, um, we select the uh, class 5 children and from class 5, we select randomly the specified number of um, students. So it, we can say it is a multi-stage random sample. Um, sub, uh, selection is done in several stages and each uh, stage uh, uh, in each stage the selection is done randomly then coming to non probability sample non in non probability sample probability of an element of being selected is not known we do not know what is the probability of a particular element being selected. Um, the easiest uh, method um, of uh, selecting a non probability sample is convenience sampling. Convenience sampling for um, whomever we meet with. Um, interview him or her, or um, we give the questionnaire. Many times, so what the TV um, interviews we have seen, TV um, they um, conduct exit polls, etc. What do they do? They um, um, go to a marketplace and um, whoever, whomever they come across, they ask the question. Or they may ask the um, um, a people who is uh, a person who is smart. So there is not uh, the probability of being selected is not known, and it is a biased something. Another example is suppose I want to conduct um, my study. Uh, in Ravensa College, because I am working in Ravensa College and most of the students are known to me, so they will return the questionnaire to me. So it will be convenient to, convenient for me to select data from Ravensa College. Um, the second type of um, uh, non probability sampling is quota sampling. Quota sampling means um, we first identify relevant categories of people and um, decide how many um, subjects to get from each category. Suppose we decide 30 male and 30 females, uh, 30 males and 30 females um, of age group um, 20 to 25 and uh, 30 to 35. So, there is not, a, uh, in the age group of 30 to 35, there may not be enough um, female students, but we decide to, to uh, select 30 students, so there may be more number of male students, so the probability of a female being selected uh, or being included in the sample is more than the probability of a male being included. Then purposive sampling. Purposive sampling uh, 
is a valuable kind of sampling. Um, many times um, uh, in field research, suppose we want to study some special type of um, subjects. Suppose we want to study schizophrenia. Uh, from a list of uh, voter list, we cannot uh, take randomly um, uh, people and uh, study them. We have to go to some doctor or we have to uh, give some uh, screening instrument whether the person is uh, having schizophrenia or not, then we have to select it. So um, we cannot take uh, in that case, um, unique case, um, uh, it is not appropriate to select unique cases randomly that are specially informative. We cannot uh, take a random sample. Uh, another type of sample is a snowball sample. Snowball sample means um, a snowball sample begins with the collection of data uh, from one or more uh, contacts um, uh, we usually known to the researcher. Suppose uh, the researcher collects data from uh, some uh, person who he or she knows, then after the data collection, the researcher asks the respondent to provide contact information for other potential respondents. So to give uh, the contact numbers of their friends. Um, so, uh, and then these potential respondents are contacted and provide more contacts. So this is a network uh, type of something. Uh, <clears throat> then systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is um, a non-probability sampling method, but uh, from the name, it may appear that it is probability sampling. Um, suppose we select from a, we have a list of um, class 10 students. We select each 10th student from the list. So this is systematic sampling. Um, why it is um, a non-probability sampling method? Because we select each 10th student and the probability of number, uh, uh, probability of the in-between nine students being selected um, is zero. Uh, they are not selected. So each um, student does not have an equal chance of being included in the study. So these are various um, types of samples. Then uh, there are uh, different types of research. First, we know the best type of research is and most known type of research is Experimental research. Um, what is an experiment? Ex in an experiment, the researcher manipulates one variable and controls the other variables. All the extraneous variables are controlled. Um, the researcher may have or can have a control group for comparison purposes. Both the group, uh, the um, uh, independent variable has different values for both the groups, for the experimental group and for the control group. And subjects are randomly assigned to experimental group and 
control group. So subjects are, are randomly assigned to experimental conditions. And um, uh, extraneous variables are controlled and um, manipulation of independent variable is done by the uh, researcher. So these three are the uh, characteristics of the uh, experimental uh, research. Um, so sometimes, um, usually um, in social science, uh, laboratory experiments are not of um, um, are not appropriate to study many of the problems in social science research. We can uh, conduct laboratory experiment, but many times we have to uh, opt for field experiments. In field experiments, Experiments are conducted in a real life situation, in real field. So, um, since uh, we are conducting the study in the real life situation, in the actual field, the extraneous factors are not possible to be controlled. Because in a natural setting, there is no way to control any factor so absolutely, so accurately as one does in the laboratory experiment. We uh, uh, may go for uh, keeping some of the extraneous variables constant. Um, to control their effect, but it is not possible to control all the extraneous variables. Um, uh, for example, then uh, we have um, groups, we expose the experimental group to the independent variable and we have a control group or comparison group um, control group is also known as comparison group, um, uh, which is not exposed to the independent variable. So independent variable is manipulated and we um, compare the results of the both group, the both the groups. Suppose we want to, for example, we want to study um, the effects of different methods of teaching. Um, the school is uh, the natural setting um, from where the researcher randomly selects um, a specified number of children from a particular uh, class and randomly assign them to two groups. Um, for example, experimental group and control group. We have two different methods of teaching. So the experimental group is um, exposed to a, um, uh, uh, new to, uh, to the method of teaching whose effect we are going to find out. Uh, suppose it is uh, a tutorial method and the uh, control group is uh, exposed to the um, lecture uh, method, uh, usual lecture method. Then their educational achieve performance, academic performance of these children are compared before and after the introduction of the methods of teaching. Uh, if there is a difference, we can attribute the difference to the teaching method effect of teaching method. So it is field experiment. Field experiment, the experiment is done in the uh, actual field, real life situation. So here, researcher manipulates one variable. Uh, it can have a control group uh, for comparison purposes. Uh, 
it can control some extraneous variables but uh, the um, experimental situation is not highly controlled uh, or is not as controlled as uh, in the laboratory um and uh, here also random assignment is done we assign the um, children uh, or subjects randomly to the experimental group and to the control group um, another type of experiment is natural experiment natural experiments uh, in natural experiments the treatment that means the independent variable varies through some naturally occurring or on planned event that happens to be exogenous to the outcome the independent variable occurs naturally and natural experiments have the ability to make comparisons the word natural in the natural experiment means the event or the independent variable is not planned or intended to influence the outcome it is not pre planned um, we do not manipulate the um, independent variable directly it occurs naturally um, uh for example uh, we may um, study uh, the effect of uh, an earthquake suppose uh, the effect of um, spread of corona now the um, uh, schools uh, 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 have been closed and online teaching is going on suppose we are um, studying the effect of all this we have not planned earlier um, to manipulate uh, or to um, expose the sample expose the students to online teaching or uh, to expose to the lockdown condition um, as created by the corona it has occurred naturally and we may um, study the effect of these independent variables naturally occurring independent variables another type of uh, experiment is quasi experiments uh, we know in experimental method three things are uh, required but in ex true experiments three things are required first um, random assignment of uh, subjects to experimental group and to control group second control of extraneous variables and third um, manipulation of um uh, the independent variable always random assignment and manipulation of independent variable is not possible and in field experiments i have already told we cannot control all the extraneous variables so there will be some uh, variables some confounding variables um okay um so in quasi experiments it is not possible to randomly assign people to treatment or um, to treatments and the manipulation of independent variable uh, is not possible um uh, what we do there we select we do not manipulate the independent variable but we select them suppose we want to uh, study we want to the study the differences in 
intelligence of males and females we cannot randomly assign the people to male groups and to female groups we have to select the um, uh, males and females we have to select them so we cannot manipulate here the independent variable is gender we cannot manipulate uh, the gender of the people we have to select uh, them that is quasi experimental um, study uh, why it is uh, called quasi experiment means it is an experiment that lacks random assignment but that otherwise has a similar purposes and structural structural attributes to randomized experiments we select the subjects so we do not randomly assign the subjects but it has other properties of a randomized experiment so it appears like an experiment but it is not an experiment so uh, this is quasi experiment then uh, let us discuss another type of uh, study research another type of research that is ex post facto research ex post facto research there are two types of research first prospective and another type of research is retrospective in prospective research the researcher tries to find out the future or potential results we manipulate the independent variable and we uh, anticipate the effect of this manipulation or effect of this treatment so first we manipulate the cause then we anticipate the effect clear so we um, uh, try to find out the future result after manipulating the independent variable that means cause um, leads to effect we manipulate the independent variable and we try to find out the effect we will try to predict the effect in a retrospective um, research the researcher tries to trace the history tries to find out the cause of an event um, in a reverse direction in prospective research we predict the effect Mm, we try to find out the effect but in a retrospective research we try to find out the cause of an event so here the result has already occurred result has already occurred we try to find out the cause behind this uh, occurrence so causal factors are pre existing uh, uh, we um try to find out them by going in a reverse direction so from the effect we try to uh, predict the cause and ex post facto research is retrospective in nature the researcher predicts a cause on the basis of a controlled effect since no variation can be done on the effect because the effect has already taken place on the basis of independent variable we cannot control um, the effect the control uh, effect has already taken place so it can be defined as an empirically based investigation which doesn't involve the researchers direct control over the independent variable first thing we um, go in the reverse direction from the independent variable 
we try to find out the cause. Uh, sorry, by, um, uh, we do not control the independent variable. From the effect, we try to find out the cause. First thing. Uh, uh, second thing, we cannot control the independent variable. In prospective research, first cause uh, takes place, then we try to find out the effect, predict the, we predict the effect, and we control the cause. Cause is the independent variable. But here, we cannot control the independent variable. Because um, independent variable has already led to the effect. The effect has already occurred. So independent variable has already led to the effect and no more it, it can no more be manipulated. The conclusions regarding the uh, relationship between the variables are inferred without intervening or varying the independent variable or dependent variable. Um, uh, so over here manipulation is not possible and of course random assignment is not um, possible. Um, characteristics of exposed factor uh, research is the researcher has a control or comparison group. Um, for example, an experimental group with the effect, a control group without the effect. Uh, then both the groups have to be compared to find out the cause of the effect. Uh, let us take an example. We try to uh, find out the cause of uh, lung cancer. Cancer is the effect. It has already taken place. Some people are suffering from cancer, lungs cancer, and some people are not suffering from uh, lungs cancer. So our experimental group may be the people suffering from lungs cancer and the control group is those people without um, lungs cancer. And both the groups are compared to find out the cause of the effect, cause of the lung cancer. The second characteristic is the behavior um, or the uh, treatment uh, or the uh, independent variable cannot be manipulated or changed. We cannot, uh, uh, independent variable has also um, been taken place. So the researcher cannot manipulate or change the already occurred actions or behavior. The researcher focuses on the effects. The researcher tries to analyze the how and what of an event. Uh, and explores the possible effects and possible causes. The possible causes of the effects. So, uh, in experimental research and exposed factor research, there are some differences. Please be um, clear. In experimental research, uh, the independent variable is controlled or manipulated. In exposed factor research, independent variable, variable cannot be directly manipulated. It cannot be directly manipulated. In experimental research, randomization can be used so that it can be said that other factors remaining equal, the change in dependent variable is due to change in independent variable. If we try to find out, suppose we are going, going to find out the cause of lung cancer, we take two groups, one with lung cancer and one without lung cancer. We try to compare the possible causes. And suppose 
we find out that the independent uh, the experimental group that is the lung cancer group um, had had a smoking habit um, they were smoking a lot and the control group were not smoking so the here we can um, uh, uh, we uh, may interpret that smoking is um, the probable cause of um, lung cancer but there may be since we have not controlled all the extraneous variables as in uh, an experimental research um, we cannot uh, say it is the only cause we um, it is difficult to interpret because more than one probable cause may be there but in experimental research we are uh, controlling all the extraneous variables so we may say all other things remaining constant the change in independent variable is due to the change in dependent variable but in ex post facto research we interpret that the dependent variable is the probable cause of independent variable uh, sorry 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 uh, i am wrong uh, we may uh, interpret that the change in dependent variable is probably due to the differences in the independent variable because uh, in ex post facto research we start from the effect so the change in dependent variable are probably due to the change in independent variable another type of research is survey research but it is a survey research survey research is a non experimental descriptive research um, uh, it is non experimental uh, in the sense that it doesn't establish cause and effect relationship um, it is the uh, descriptive research Uh, uh, it just describes the facts and it is usually uh, used for studying a large sample a large uh, so the sample size is usually very large in survey research and it is quantitative um, survey research is quantitative and it doesn't involve observation under under controlled condition so we do not uh, um, have any control over the um, situation so we the extraneous we cannot uh, control the extraneous um, variables and we do not manipulate the independent variable that's why we do not cannot establish cause and effect relationship um and it is a descriptive it just describes the fact what is going on we do not explain it um if at all we make any explanation it is tentative so in survey research a researcher collects data with the help of standardized questionnaire or interview from a sample of people um, here um, the population uh, refers to the universe of the study and uh, the sample size uh, 
is uh, large uh, in survey research. So, survey, in survey research, um, the instrument of survey can be we may interview the sample or we may administer questionnaire, paper pencil questionnaire. We can administer it. And types of survey, there are the different types of uh, survey research. Uh, 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 one is cross-sectional survey and the other is longitudinal survey. Cross-sectional survey um, involves uh, collection of data from different types of groups, such as uh, different age groups or different um, gender groups or different uh, religion groups, religious groups. So, uh, different cross-sections uh, data is uh, collected. So, uh, and in uh, longitudinal survey, the um, subjects are studied for a longer period of time. Uh, it is used to study behavior changes, attitude changes, etc. How over the time attitude of people changes um, that can be studied. Uh, through a longitudinal survey. Longitudinal survey can be of three, can, um, uh, there are three types of longitudinal survey. First is trained studies. Uh, trained studies uh, is a phenomenon. Uh, uh, um, in trained studies, the trend of a phenomenon is analyzed. Same su subjects may not be available, but um, subjects are from the same population. Um, <clears throat> we may um, study uh, the use of mobile phones among the teenagers. Um, trend. trend, trend uh, so, what changes are the trend of uh, use of mobile phones? Uh, suppose you are, um, in 2000, uh, in the year 2005, we survey some teenagers, and in 2010, we also survey the, um, uh, a large sample of teenagers. Um, the same sample may not be available, but we can say that the trend is um, uh, uh, in this uh, direction. The trend of um, the direction of mobile use, we can say. Second type of longitudinal study is cohort studies. In cohort studies, a particular population uh, it is studied um, uh, more than once within a time gap. And the um, same group may not be available and different um, group may be studied. Suppose those teenagers, uh, those um, uh, people who were teenagers in the year 2005 are studied and uh, in 2010 suppose uh, um, those were 15 years old 15 year olds they must have been 20 year olds so in 2010 we study the two, um, 20 year olds but the 15 year olds whom we studied in 2005 may not be available, uh, but we study those who were 15 year olds in 2005. And a third type of longitudinal study is panel studies. In panel studies, same sample or the panel are studied for more than once 
in order to investigate the change in behavior or attitude and um, panel study um, studies are difficult because the same subjects are studied more than once and the same subjects may not be available uh, and final uh, finally we have the case uh, study method um, what is the case study case study method involves an in-depth study of a single subject or event so we take a single case and we conduct an in-depth study it may be descriptive or explanatory it can be applied on a single subject, small or large group. Uh, like um, we may study the case of a particular uh, group of people, organization. We can study an organization, a class within a school or a school within uh, a city. So, we study a single subject or single group and we conduct an in-depth study. While survey method involves uh, collection of data about few factors from a large sample. So, we collect a um, large number of data about a small number of factors. In case study, we collect a large number of data from a single subject. Um, that is case study. Uh, let me discuss before leaving. How can we um, establish a causal relationship or we can infer causal relationship. We can only establish causal relationship um, comfortably in experimental method and of course we try to establish cause-effect relationship in field experiments. So there is, uh, there are three uh, requirements, associative variant, variation, uh, a variation in X yields a variation in Y. So the researcher can conclude that X possesses Y. Uh, systematic order of Y, X must occur before or simultaneously with Y, not after it. So the cause must precede the effect. And um, thirdly, absence of other causes. Um, there are no other factor which um, are causing y. Then, then only we can say that uh, x is causing y. So you have left many of uh, you have left only three are uh, there. So I think uh, we should stop here and we will meet tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.